and welcome to another advanced skill video tutorial. In this video, we're going to rig up this character, which has been modeled by Jason Baldwin. We start off with bringing in our model, and we're going to do so by referencing. That way, if the model changes, we can easily get the update into the rig. I recommend always when using referencing that you use the namespace option. Here's our model, and the first thing I want to do is put the geometry on a display layer, which easily allows us to template the geometry. Next, let's bring in the standard biped fit skeleton template. And we'll now go ahead and move the fit skeleton joints into place to fit to the geometry. Now, as I move joints around here to make sure I maintain the X down orientation of the joints, I'm going to turn on fit mode. to placing the finger joints, I'm going to take advantage of the new Maya 2014 automatically project in center joint feature. Now that we have placed all the fit skeleton joints uh, to match the geometry, we're going to go ahead and build the advanced skeleton, which we'll do by selecting the root joint and hit the build advanced skeleton button. And we have an advanced skeleton rig that matches the geometry. Now the geometry is not yet bound to the rig. But that is yet to come. First we're going to make it look a little bit nicer by adjusting the control curves to match the size of the geometry. Now that we have scaled the control curves on the right hand side of the character, we're just going to mirror these curves to the left hand side of the character by using the mirror control curves right to left button. Then we'll hit the go to build pose button to make sure the character is in neutral pose. The next step is to bind the geometry to the advanced skeleton deform joints. Now this can be done manually and in the skinning section you'll find a button for selecting the correct joints to work with and a button to help you set the correct options in the smooth point options. However, we'll skin this character by using the skin cage function. Start off with creating the skin cage. The skin cage function automatically generates a cage to match your character. Now the skin cage is generated with three edge loops per joint, each representing the middle of the joint, 50% deformation, and the start and the end of the deformation. Now let's take a closer look at what that means. Have a look at the knee of this character. Now if we choose to only display the skin cage. Now looking at the simplified geometry of a skin cage, it's easy to see why it deforms the way it does. Now the skin cage has been generated with construction history and the history curves are on the display layer called skin curves 1 and skin curves 2. Let's for example take a look how we can sharpen the bend of the deformation in this knee by sliding these red curves closer to the green curve. We now have a much sharper bend of the knee. If we wanted to exaggerate it the other way, we would simply just slide these red curves the opposite way and you get a much broader deformation of the knee. Now this is the principle of working with the skin cage. Adjust the curves to set the width of your deformation and by tweaking the shape of the curves you can also control the shape of the deformation that you want. Now once you've gone through the whole character and sculpted 
this deformation that you want by tweaking these curves. Then it's time to transfer the deformation from the cage onto your actual geometry, which is done by first select the geometry you wish to deform, which in this case will go through the outliner and select all the geometry for the whole character. Next, we're going to hit the button called Copy Skin to Selected Mesh. This is now copying the information from the skin cage onto your geometry. And we're able to see that straight away we are getting some rather interesting results. Now let's take a closer look at the head and get it ready for the advanced skeleton face setup. The head itself is skinned to the body, the eyes apply simple skinning to the eye joint, will bind the upper teeth to the head joint and the lower teeth and the tongue to the jaw joint. Note that it's not required that you apply skinning to the jaw joint to create jaw deformation. The face setup will automatically take care of this for us. So let's open the advanced skeleton face setup interface and start here. Now for all the edges and the points that need to be defined, you can use the little help button here to show an image describing the correct selection. Okay, with all the loops and vertices defined, it's time to build the face cage. Once this has been built, it can be tweaked to match more accurate your geometry. And with the face cage nicely aligned to the geometry, create the head cage. The function of the head cage is a bit like a helmet, defining an area where the face deformation stops having an effect. The add eyelid button will generate an influence object around the inner eyelid to avoid any face shapes opening or closing the eye. And then it's time to build the advanced skeleton face setup. And that concludes this video tutorial. Finally, an encouragement to the studios using advanced skeleton for commercial projects. Please contact me for a commercial license. Thank you and see you next time.